Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeeds, and today we'll be covering topic 5.2, which is clear cutting. As you can probably guess from the background here and the name, clear cutting is just cutting down all of the trees in a given area at once, usually to harvest them for lumber or to clear the land for some other use, such as agriculture. It's a really efficient way for clearing land or harvesting lumber, so it tends to maximize economic profits in the short term, but it has some serious consequences that we'll be exploring in today's video. Our objective for 5.2 today is to describe the effect of clear cutting on forests. The essential knowledge that we need in order to do this is that clear cutting is economically advantageous, but leads to soil erosion, increased stream temperature and soil temperature, and flooding. We also need to know that trees in a forest absorb pollutants from the air and store or sequester carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, which reduces the effects of climate change. Cutting trees down and burning them releases that carbon dioxide they store and contributes to climate change. Our suggested science skill for today is concept explanation. So first we'll take a look at some of the direct short-term impacts of clear cutting on a forest. And the first one, and perhaps the most important, is soil erosion. So without the stabilizing effect of the tree's roots in the soil anymore, the topsoil, which contains all of the nutrients and the organic matter, is much more prone to erosion. It's easily blown away by the wind, it's easily washed away by the rain, and what's gonna happen is we can see right here in the diagram, there's gonna be channels carved into the side of slopes. Again, the soil is just gonna be washed away really easily by the rain and the wind, and it gets deposited in nearby bodies of water. So we can see in the second picture how muddy this stream is. That increases its turbidity. Turbidity is a measure of the total suspended solids in a body of water, and you can think of it as kind of how cloudy it is. So this is a problem for fish, it may make it harder for them to get oxygen from the water. It may clog their gills. It's also gonna make it harder for plants that need sunlight to penetrate the water in order to photosynthesize. We have another diagram here that shows the effect even of just leaving a strip of vegetation next to that stream. So a lot of those trees there and the roots would absorb a lot of the sediments running down that cliff in the selective cutting example. But when it's clear cut, there's just no vegetation to stabilize the soil. And as a result, we get a really muddy stream and we get very turbid waters. Another important impact is the fact that this leads to increased soil and water temperatures. So when we lose the shade that's offered by the leaves of the trees, that's gonna result in more sunlight hitting the soil and the soil is gonna have a lower albedo, meaning it's going to absorb more sunlight than the leaves of the trees did. And so that's gonna increase the temperature of the soil as well. The loss of the shade on the river also warms the river and the fact that the river is now a muddier, darker color is also going to lead to the river absorbing more heat from the sun's rays. This is a problem for microorganisms that live in the soil. Direct sunlight can kill them. It also dries out the soil and it's going to make it even more prone to erosion. And then finally, we can even experience flooding and landslides when a forest is cut down and it's clear cut. So again, without that stabilizing root structure in place, the soil is far more prone to erosion. Another problem is that the logging machinery compacts the soil and the increased sunlight has dried it out. So it's decreased the water holding capacity of the soil. So now when it does rain, that soil is gonna hold a lot less water. It's gonna produce a lot more runoff and that's going to lead to landslides like we can see in this picture at the top of the screen. It can also lead to flash floods because all of that excess rain is no longer able to be absorbed by the soil because it's not able to absorb water as well without the tree's roots. Another consequence of clear cutting is that it usually replaces mature forests, like we see in the top picture here, with tree plantations, which we can see in the bottom picture. So tree plantations are areas where generally just one species of fast growing tree is replanted, grown, and then harvested. The problem here is this greatly lowers biodiversity. So because there are far fewer tree species, there are far fewer habitats suitable for other organisms that may depend on those tree species. With less biodiversity in both plants and animals, we have lower ecosystem resilience. So if there were to be some sort of natural disaster or a drought, the tree plantation is far more vulnerable to total ecosystem collapse than this mature forest, which has such wide biodiversity. It's also going to, again, allow for less habitats for a less diverse group of organisms. And then we also have this fact that all of these trees are going to be the same age. They're all planted at the same time. They're all going to be about the same size. And so this is not going to allow for dead trees to come into existence in this habitat, which are needed by many organisms 
such as woodpeckers, insects, and other decomposers. So we're not going to have the same succession in this ecosystem that we would in a mature forest where trees dying and falling down really is part of the ecosystem's natural progression. Again, it provides nutrients for decomposers and homes for many different organisms. To understand some of the longer term consequences of deforestation, especially clear cutting, we need to look at some of the benefits that forests provide. So we'll be discussing here how forests provide air filtration, how they remove CO2 from the atmosphere, and then how they're a great reservoir for biodiversity. So the stomata or the leaf pores of trees will oftentimes intake different air pollutants, things like volatile organic compounds, nitrogen dioxide and particulate matter, and they'll actually store them in the tree. So we can see in this diagram here, these pollutants that are emitted by homes, by factories, by especially power plants are gonna be taken right into the tree via these little leaf pores called stomata. And then the tree will actually convert those into less harmful substances and they'll store them in the tree or store them in the soil. And so they literally scrub the air clean of air pollutants. Another really important service that's provided by forests is the removal and storage of CO2 from the atmosphere. So we call this CO2 sequestration or CS2 CO2 storage. So trees during photosynthesis take in carbon dioxide and they convert the carbon in carbon dioxide into sugars, into tissues like the wood of the trunk. And then they release oxygen, which is needed by organisms like animals, humans for respiration. And then finally, we know that they provide a really important habitat for tons of different organisms. And this is a great reservoir for biodiversity. It's going to lead to more ecosystem resilience. And remember that humans have financial benefits from diverse ecosystems because they represent ecotourism. So people will pay to come and view beautiful landscapes that have high biodiversity. So given all those valuable services that forests provide, we can look at some of these longer term consequences of deforestation. It's going to reduce the ability of forests to filter air pollutants and carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So cutting them down, especially clear cutting them, not only prevents them from continuing to take air pollutants out of the atmosphere and store CO2, but it's going to actually release carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere when these leftover tree scraps like stumps or different branches, when those decompose and break down, they release their carbon dioxide back in the atmosphere. So now we're actually contributing to climate change with deforestation. Another problem is that there's a method of agriculture called slash and burn, which is exactly what it sounds like. And this releases carbon dioxide stored in the trees in addition to nitrous oxide, which is an incredibly potent greenhouse gas and water vapor, which although it's a natural greenhouse gas can still disrupt the amount of moisture that's retained in an area and lead to a drying out. So all of these effects contribute to climate change as we're releasing greenhouse gases back into the atmosphere by cutting down trees and especially by burning them and preventing their future sequestration or storage of carbon dioxide. Our suggested science skill for practice of our Q5.2 today is describing an environmental concept. And so I want you to see if you can describe two ecosystem services provided by forests and then explain how clear cutting that forest would affect each of those ecosystem services you described. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in today. Don't forget to like this video if it was helpful. Subscribe for future Apes video updates and check out other notes over here to the side. And as always, think like a mountain, write like a scholar.